Hello, heroes. Joe Smith here again. Hi. Um, a lot of you, a lot of you heroes out there might remember uh, the Mr. Rashard Brooks incident at the Wendy's in Atlanta, Georgia. The back a few months ago was one of the one of the top probably the top three instances of the summer to ignite all these riots and protests or whatever. Um, uh, basically, so for those of you that have been living uh, in your mom's basement or underneath the freaking rock all summer long, uh, this guy, Richard Brooks, um, happened to be ex ex-felon Happened to be previously previously charged with like, uh, uh, kidnapping related type thing and child endangerment and and uh, assault and and other stuff. Had a record. Been in prison. Um, he was at a Wendy's drive-through in Atlanta, Georgia. Guess he kind of got a. Uh, a rumbling in his tummy, and went out late one night to get a bite to eat. Well, unfortunately for him, he had a bit too much to drink before he took the drive over to the Wendy's. Which uh, heroes don't don't drink and drive. Nothing good comes out of that. But he uh, he made a bad choice. Uh, he didn't need to drink and drive, but he did. He, uh, in fact, he drank so much that he ended up passing out in the Wendy's drive through And he was blocking traffic and interrupting him flow of business. So, heroes of the Hero Nation uh, called the police saying that um, they thought someone had died or had a heart attack or a stroke or a medical emergency or something was unconscious in the car, so... Uh, police that happened to be nearby responded first and tapped on the car and one door that and he kind of woke up and they administered a uh, uh, sobri field sobriety test and this went on for like 40 or 45 minutes everything was calm, cool, clucked and then they decided that well be uh, was intoxicated or inebriated. Uh, yeah, that was uh, a ninth grade English word, inebriated, Joe Smith learned. Uh, he had too much to drink. That's why he was passed out. Uh, police officers kindly, politely, professionally asked him, Sir, uh, turn around or place you under arrest for... Uh, operating a motor vehicle while well intoxicated or under the influence or that. And then at that point, he viciously and violently assaulted the two police officers, hit them, tackled them to the ground, started wrestling and fighting with them, stole their taser, trying to steal their guns. He got their, his hand on a taser. And then he tried to take off running, and when one of the officers chased him, he turned and shot the taser at that, that officer. And then the other officer, who had his t whose taser was stolen from him, fired the only thing he had left, his pistol, uh, to stop Ray Sharp from injuring anyone or anything like that. And even though it's still kind of being debated whether it's just fight or not, uh, Joe Smith thinks it was. Uh, you're more than welcome to form your own opinion on the matter. You don't have to. You don't have to uh, have the same opinion on the matter, as Joe Smith here. And uh, Joe Smith respects your your uh, uh, First Amendment right to have a different opinion, and it's. All that. So, uh, a lot of people are saying that, well, cops only shot this guy because he's black. It wasn't because he, it wasn't because he beat up the cops. He, it wasn't because 
he uh, stole their weapon. It wasn't because he fired at them. It wasn't because he discharged a, what's considered a firearm. What the what that local attorney, state attorney, district attorney, prosecutor, whatever, had said a couple weeks prior that tasers are classified as a firearm. So he discharged a firearm. Yeah, a black prosecuting attorney couple, three weeks prior to that uh, issued a statement saying that tasers are considered classified as a firearm because there's a spark involved with operating them. Supreme Court uh, previously ruled that air guns, air operated BB guns, airsoft, air rifles are not firearms, so therefore felons can possess them because there's no spark involved. Well, tasers, there's a spark involved with the discharge of them. So they're classified as a firearm. So Mr. Brooks discharged a firearm at a police officer trying to apprehend him and take him into custody for operating a motor vehicle under the influence. And people are saying, well, Richard didn't need to die. Well, Richard didn't need to uh, assault the police. Richard didn't need to steal their taser. Richard didn't need to shoot their taser at them. Richard didn't even need to be driving drunk to begin with. Because Richard did a bunch of other stuff he didn't need to do, he died. Well, people are still claiming, well, it's all because he's black, not because he did a bunch of stuff he didn't need to do. Well, guess what? Three weeks ago, California, uh, Claremont, California, I think it was. Uh, just kind of flipping through some headlines for that. Happened to see this. It's an old headline, like three weeks ago, uh, September 19th. I think it happened, 2020. Uh, 9 19 2020. Claremont, California. 2 50 a.m. 911 dispatcher uh, receives a uh, first call of. I think a couple calls from a local McDonald's drive through Someone was asleep or unconscious or passed out. Didn't know, didn't know why. Didn't know a medical emergency or something. In the drive through at a McDonald's at 2.50 in the morning, 2.50 a.m., just before 3 a.m., at a McDonald's drive through passed out, asleep, unconscious, maybe dead in the drive through of McDonald's drive through blocking traffic. Uh, police and uh, ambulance responded right away, too. Uh, when the police and ambulance got there, they found out that uh, the person was just kind of passed out from drinking too much. They ended up getting him to wake up. And did some, I guess, uh, sobriety test or breathalyzer test or something. And determined that he was under the influence of too much alcohol. He's a, he's a bit inebriated. Well, did the police shoot and kill this guy? What color was this guy? Well, this guy happened to be white. Well, this guy was white, so did the police shoot and kill him? No, the police did not shoot this guy. Well, was it because he's white? Yes, it was because he's white. The police did not shoot and kill him because white people know that when you're passed out drunk and the cops wake you up, you don't beat them up and steal their gun and shoot them. And that's why this white guy didn't get shot and Rayshard did. Because this guy was at least man enough to say, you got me, I fucked up, I'm stupid, take me to jail. Whereas Rashar, Rashar apparently didn't have a daddy. Rashar was never taught how to be a man. And Rashar said, you take me back to prison over my dead body. And Richard Guy's wish.
Uh, not sure if the article mentioned the name of this guy a couple weeks ago in California. You can Google it if you're interested. But in the the video clip, body cam video clip, Joe Smith saw. Uh, he was cooperative with police. He obeyed their instructions. He didn't try to run. He didn't try to attack them. He didn't hit them. He didn't tackle them to the ground. He didn't steal their guns or tasers. He didn't try to hurt anyone. All he did was, after they got them all woke up, he stepped out of the car. He turned around. He put his hands behind his back. He says, I know what I got coming to me, and I deserve it. And he said, take me to jail. I deserved it. So the police took him to jail. He manned up to his bad choices. So cops ain't shooting and killing you because of your skin color. They're shooting and killing you because you make bad choices because apparently your parents didn't teach you right from wrong. And if parents of a certain skin color can't teach your kids right from wrong, then maybe that's the problem. Maybe that's the problem that needs to be addressed. Maybe we need to figure out why parents of a certain skin color can't teach your kids right from wrong and not to shoot at cops. And when cops wake you up when you're passed out three in the morning at a drive through because you drank too much to just play along and go to jail and deal with it. Because you didn't need to be in that car. You didn't need to be drinking in the first place. And you didn't need to be in that car after drinking. You didn't need to be in that drive through after drinking and driving. So, fortunately, this this last young man realized that he did some stuff that he didn't need to do. And he decided not to do anything else that he didn't need to do, so he didn't need to die. He quit, well, before he got too far behind. He realized, well, just made a few mistakes here. Time just man up and deal with it. Unfortunately for Richard, he decided uh, he decided to keep making more and more and more bad choices. Let's make some bad choices, so let's make some more bad choices, and maybe it all go away. No, it won't. Making bad choices after you make bad choices, it's just going to create more problems. And you know, there, there are, there really, really are a lot of super wonderful people with darker skin tones from other countries, um, from Africa, from the Middle East, from Asia, China, Japan, South America, Mexico, Canada even. Yeah, even, even some people from Canada. But yeah, there, there really are a lot of wonderful people out there. Different races, religions, skin color, skin colors, or whatever. So, even though stories like these like, and certain people and politicians and the liberal media try try and make these issues out like everyone of certain color is like this, no, they aren't. And even Joe Smith kind. Of, Probably, you know, has made some comments in the past that he probably shouldn't have. But, you know, there's there's a lot of darker skin color people out there that are really wonderful people that would never, never in their life hurt another person. Never in their life uh, use drugs or alcohol or smoke. 
never in their life operated a vehicle while inebriated or under the influence. They would never, ever assault a police officer. And they're wonderful members of society and they are wonderful daddies and mommies and parents. So not not trying to make it sound like it's just this is a one race issue. There there's for sure, this young this past young man, like there's there's probably been some white people before that uh made bad choice and attacked the police and got shot. In fact, stats say that twice as many white people have been shot by the police in twenty twenty alone so far than black people have. So apparently uh, twice as many white people make bad choices or than uh, black people do. So but it's kind of interesting how the news, the mainstream media, wants you to think that the minority of the problem is actually the majority, or however you want to say it. So it's not that great with words, but but in reality, Christ many white people get shot by police, and most of them probably deserved it because they probably made a bad choice because they probably they probably pointed a gun at the police or they probably uh, reached for something. Maybe they tried jumping in their car after police told them don't don't run for your vehicle, don't get in that vehicle. Or because they hit a cop or something, so there's plenty of white people and other people of other races that make bad choices out there too, so But Richard wasn't shot because he was black, and this last young man wasn't not shot because he was white. This last young man wasn't shot because he manned up and cooperated with police and let them take him to jail. Richard was shot not because he's black, because he made bad choices and kept making bad choices and refused to go back to jail and man up for his bad choices. That's all there is to it. It's not a black or white issue. It's a bad choice issue. Because someone had bad parents, probably. And that's all Joe Smith has to say on this topic. And Joe Smith, sign out.